كان أمرا مقضيا فحملته فانتبذت به مكانا قصيا 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 فأجاء المخاض إلى جذع النقلة قالت يا ليتني قالت يا ليتني مت قبل هذا 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 وكنت نسيا منسيا فناداها من تحتها ألا تحزني قد جعل ربك تحتك سريا وهزي إليك بجذع النخلة تساقط عليك رطبا جنيا وهزي إليك بجذع النخلة تساقط عليك رطبا جنيا فكلي واشربي وقري عينا فإما ترين من البشر أحدا فقولي فقولي إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فكلي واشربي وقري عينا فإما ترين من البشر أحدا فقولي إني نذرت للرحمن صوما فلن أكلم اليوم إنسيا فأتت به قومها تحمله قالوا يا مريم لقد جئت شيئا فريا يا أخت هارون ما كان أبوك امرأ سوء وما كانت أمك بغيا فأشارت إليه قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قالوا كيف نكلم من كان في المهد صبيا قال إني عبد الله قال إني عبد الله آتاني الكتاب وجعلني نبيا وجعلني مباركا أينما كنت وأوصاني بالصلاة والزكاة ما دمت حيا وبرا بوالدتي ولم يجعلني جبارا شقيا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا والسلام علي يوم ولدت ويوم أموت ويوم أبعث حيا ذلك عيسى بن مريم ذلك عيسى بن مريم ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمتعون ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمتعون What makes moms so special? Ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to be reading out of this book called See the Bright Side to figure out what makes moms so special. After that, we are going to be visiting masjids from across the world. Are you ready? Let's begin.
will I give my kingdom to? Let me explain. Once upon a time, there lived a very just and a noble king. And that king decided that he would give his entire kingdom to one person. Not just any person, no. He wanted to find the person in his kingdom who had done the most good. And for that person who had done the most good, this king would give his entire kingdom. I'm talking the castle. I'm talking the zoo. I'm talking the water park. I'm talking all of the restaurants. Everything in the kingdom would go to this one person. So one by one, each person in the kingdom began lining up to talk about what they had done for their kingdom and to try to get the special reward. One by one, each person would come and present because, of course, the king would only give his kingdom to the person who had done the most good. And finally, after everyone presented, the king selected three finalists. The whole community gathered, and they watched as these three individuals came onto the stage. The first person was a teacher. He said, ladies and gentlemen, I am a teacher. And as a teacher, I have taught all of the young boys and girls of our kingdom such that they could become the best version of themselves. And everyone gave this man a round of applause. And there was one woman who was sitting in the front she was smiling bigger than everyone else and she was clapping harder than everyone else the teacher came off of the stage the second person came the person said ladies and gentlemen boys and girls i am a businesswoman i have created businesses that have created jobs for people in our kingdom and with those jobs those people are able to eat and drink and take care of their families everyone gave the businesswoman a big round of applause and again there was this old woman at the front smiling bigger than everyone else clapping harder than everyone else and the businesswoman came off the stage finally the last person came on the person was an engineer. They said, I am an engineer. I have built the bridges that have connected our kingdom to the rest of the world. I have built our airports, which have allowed us to travel across the world. And everyone gave the engineer a big round of applause. And again, this old woman, she claps harder than everyone else. She smiles bigger than everyone else. Now the king, he's got a tough situation. He just doesn't know who to pick. He goes back into his quarters, into his office, and he begins to noodle on this. He says, do I give it to the teacher? Do I give it to the engineer? Do I give it to the businesswoman? This is too tough of a decision. Not even a decision, a decision. He says, look, I'm going to call on that woman. Maybe that woman has an opinion. Maybe she might be able to know. So she call, he calls on that woman. And when the woman enters into his office, he says, A woman! Who do you think I should give my kingdom to? And the woman says, I can't pick. I really can't pick. The king gets angry. He says, Don't you understand what I'm asking you? Whoever you tell me, they will get my entire kingdom. They will get the zoo. They will get the water park. They will get all of the restaurants. Whoever you pick will get my entire kingdom. And you're telling me that you can't pick? The woman says, no, king, honestly, I cannot pick. Because I am the mother of those three kids. I can't pick. And then the king got it. He figured out. Who was the one who did the most good for his kingdom? The king invites all of the people again. And he says, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have decided who is the one who has done the most for my kingdom. He takes off his crown. He invites up the three people and he invites up that old lady. And he puts the crown on the mother. 
And he says, the person who has done the most good for my kingdom is the mother because she helped raise these three children. Now look, we are nearing the end of the month of Ramadan when our moms and dads have not gotten enough to sleep, when our moms and dads haven't been drinking enough water and are feeling parched and dehydrated, and our moms and dads are telling us what to do. And in these moments, tensions begin to flare. No, I'm kidding. I mean, let's not get too dramatic about it. You want more drama? No, no, no. We're too early for drama. Oh, you want more? No, okay. We won't. We can't do more drama right now. Okay, but you get the point. These are the times when often we can get into a little bit of arguments with our moms and dads. Maybe they're telling us what to do and we're not trying to listen. But I'm here to remind you that our mom and our dad, but especially our mom, She's special because she helped raise us. And that is what we are going to be talking about today. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am Brother Amin Asr, and I am your host here in the Muslim Treehouse. Now, you might be wondering, Brother Amin, this doesn't look like a Muslim Treehouse to me. This looks like something else. Well, this is something else. This is actually the lookout. We're not in the Muslim Treehouse today because Brother Jake's got the day off. Alhamdulillah, well-deserved. But something that you guys might not know or you might know is that every week throughout the entire year on Thursdays and on Saturdays, we get together to laugh, to giggle, to learn about our Lord in the Muslim treehouse, even after the month of Ramadan. But enough about me. Let's say salams to some of you persons and people in here today. I see Manha from Fayetteville, Arkansas. I see Mariam and Suleiman from Mars something. I mean, Maryland, Zainab from England. Huda and Ikram. Salam, Huda and Ikram. I see Sadia from Maryland. I see Irha from Pakistan with the cutie, cutie, cutie stuffy. I see Khizr the king, King Khizr. I see Hamad from California, Adam from Minnesota, Noor Khan, who's not smiling. Come on, Noor Khan. I see Inaya, who's eating something. I see Azar Shabir from India, India. I see Yasin from Egypt, Egypt, Al Misr. I see Hajira from Long Island, New York, New York, wearing her Noor Kid shirt. I see Sanin from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. I see Yasmin from Edmonton, Cam Canada. Abdullahi from the USA, who's not smiling. There we go. I see Wanya from California. I see Amana from California or Canada. I see Ariba Nasser and all of the other kids there. Oh my goodness. I see Safa from Connecticut. Yakin and Nura from South Africa. South Africa. I see Musa and Noor. I see Malik from Egypt. Bilal from Franklin. I think that's Franklin, Wisconsin. I see Hanin from Missouri. I see Walid and Rida from Virginia, originally from Morocco. All right, you guys, we're not here to just do that all day. Come on, I, I get carried away. It's just so nice to see all of your beautiful faces. Sometimes I just get carried away. No, we're here for a program. Today, we don't just have a little question. We don't even have a medium-sized question. No, we have a big question. What is it that makes our moms so special in order to answer this question i have created a nearpod a nearpod which by the way as i get it up i need remind you that you guys all should subscribe on youtube there's approximately 700 of you guys watching on youtube right now and there's a thousand people on zoom alhamdulillah i'm allahu akbar yes right a thousand hey so you guys subscribe on 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 youtube we've made a decision if we get to 85,000, 85,000. We're going to give away the trip to the Dominican Republic. But we need to get to 85,000. So hit the subscribe button. 
I don't know if it just went up or went down. But regardless, hit the subscribe button. Okay, so we're going to go on Nearpod here, and I'm going to send this to our folks in the Zoom community, all right, in the Zoom community to join me on Nearpod, okay? The question that I'm asking today is, what makes your mom so special? Now, as you guys are putting in those responses, today's program is brought to us in part by the Muslim Treehouse. I'm going to play a quick video while you guys are adding your messages. Amin, can you check on Hassan? I think he might be crying. Crying? Hassan? Hmm? What's wrong? Nothing. Ahmed said he could hear you crying. No, uh, no. What's going on, man? Why are you so sad? It's just Ramadan camp is coming to an end. I don't know what to do. Hassan, the Ramadan camp is for kids. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just so much fun, I mean. <laughs> Hassan, don't worry. You can just join the Muslim tree house. What's that? Every week, even after the month of Ramadan, thousands of kids join us for live programs and activities. So kids like me can join? Hassan, you're a special boy, but it's for kids ages 5 to 12. Hassan, aren't you fasting? I wasn't actually eating it. Hassan. I'm just, just for the commercial, I mean. Hassan, you're just, just for the commercial. Allah's watching. Alright, that was kind of funny. I think it was funny, but I do want to just share with you, okay? Uh, for those that don't know, we actually do have the Muslim Treehouse, and you can sign up online. It's something that your parents have to do, okay? But the cool thing about it is you can contribute whatever you want to join. So if you'd like to contribute to Nora Kids, because we do need your support, and you'll actually get a free backpack. You'll get two free backpacks if you do 20 bucks a month, one if you do one free backpack if you do $10 a month, um, or you could join for 5 bucks a month, or you can join for free, okay? Um, but the way it works is every single month we do a brand new course, uh, and then we do programs on Thursdays and on Saturdays. Here's the thing. Inshallah, like our Eid program is going to be insane. And we're going to get started right away. I don't want you guys to miss out. So ask your family to join the Muslim Treehouse and uh, make sure that you are able to benefit. All right. Now let's go to the Nearpod uh, and see what all you guys have written. All right. So Marwa says... My mom makes is so special because she cooks for me. Yeah, that's nice. Ayub and Yusuf, she always cooks for me. Moms do that. Sometimes dads do that. I do that on Sundays sometimes. Not all the time, but I do, okay? Ibrahim and Yusuf in Texas, she cooks for us and buys us things. You guys, she does more than cook for us. What is this? It's all about cooking here. You guys, come on. She does more than cooking. Allahu Akbar. Although I am interested to see what she cooks for you. <sighs> Today's one of those days when Brother Amin's actually pretty hungry. Like, really, actually. I don't know why. All right. Ayub and Yusuf, she homeschools all of us. We're five kids. Oh, we need to meet Ayub and Yusuf to learn about their super mom. They're a super mom, Ayub and Yusuf. Let's go and check them out. Allahu. Oh, no. Okay, wait. Ayub. Yeah, here we go. And they're from Dallas, Tejas. Da spotlight for everyone and unmute and let me pull these kiddos Assalamualaikum. alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how are you guys doing ayub and you and yusuf from dallas Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Allahu akbar okay so now i have to ask you first the important question last night when you guys were making dua did you think about newer kids please say that you did a little bit you don't want to lie. That's okay. That's okay. You can make dua now, though. Okay. <laughs> Remember, nor kids in your dua. Okay. So now, who's Ayub? Who's Yusuf? Uh, wait. Can you guess? I'm gonna guess Ayub is the old one, and Yusuf is the younger one. Oh yeah, you got it. Because I figured that Ayub, you were the one who typed it in, and then you typed in your name first, and then Yusuf, you a second. Okay, very good. So Yusuf, let me ask oh. you first. Yusuf, how old are you, buddy? Yusuf, tell me about your mama. What makes your mama so special? Well, she's nice. She cooks for me. She also homeschools us. What is that like to homeschool? Like, do you think that takes a lot of work or a little bit of work? A lot of work. Yeah. Yeah? Do you think your mom probably made some pretty serious sacrifices so that way she could take care of you guys? Yeah. Because she could just, like, have a job. She could just be like, oh, you know what? You guys go to regular school. I'm going to go to work. You should go do that. 
right? <laughs> By the way, I mean, like a lot of moms, there's nothing wrong with that, right? But I'm just saying, like, she had to probably make a pretty serious sacrifice to take care of you guys. That's that's pretty special. When you close your eyes and you think about her, does it make your heart happy? Uh, yeah. Probably because she loves you with her whole yeah. heart, right? You know, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, you know, lots of times we do something called dhikr. Dhikr is like remembrance and we do dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I like to do dhikr of moms sometimes because it makes my heart happy and just like think about like what makes all of our moms so special. Ayub, do you have anything to offer this conversation? Anything distinctive, something that's unique about your mom? Well... There's probably a lot of things, but I can't think of anything. It's tough when I put you on the moment. Okay, but what's what's one characteristic of your mom that you really admire? Well, she, um, she always um, she always helps us and like listens to us for when we're like sad or angry. Mm, that's such a big deal. Such a big deal, yeah. man. Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless your mom, Ayub and Yusuf. You guys, let's give Ayub and Yusuf a big round of applause. Big round of applause for these guys. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. All right, can you guys can you guys mute for me? You guys mute for me. I'm going to go back to the um, thingamabobber here. And let's see what other things people have written. All right. <sighs> Ira and Inaya from the UAE says she carried me for nine months. Allahu Akbar. Nine months in her tumbo. Tumbo is Swahili. It means stomach. I don't know why in our family we call stomach tumbo. Tumbo. All right. Ifa and Rafay from Atlanta. Our mothers give us food, love, and raises us. Asad said, she raised me and taught me to be a great Muslim. Zakaria says, she makes the best food and she loves me and my cat. Zakaria is also from Texas, okay? But we are going to go to Zakaria to talk to Zakaria. I'm curious to see what kind of food his mom is cooking here, especially on a day like today when brother means feeling a little bit hungry, okay? So let's go over here. I got to unpin Ayub. You guys, just give me a moment, all right? It's going to take me a long my brain's working a little bit slow today. All right, so first, unpin these guys. And we're going to go to Zakaria. Ooh, I can't find him. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Oh, here we go. Zakaria from Texas and Palestine. Okay, there we go. Unmute. And let's go to him. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, Zakaria? Alhamdulillah. Zakaria, have I called on you during Ramadan or did I call on you before Ramadan? I think you've called on me during Ramadan before. Zakaria, is it okay if I call Not on this one? Oh, on a different Ramadan. Okay, all right, very good, very good. Zakaria, tell me about what kind of what kind of food's your mom cooking these days? What's up? What's what's in the kitchen? Well, recently we cooked some falafel. No, 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 no. What else? Um, we cooked some chicken kima. Allah, we're not this falafel. Like, was it like the crunchy variety where you like when you take a bite, it like goes crunch, crunch, crunch? Is it one of those? The crunchy kind, not the Allah, soft kind. Allah, oh my goodness! And like when it like hits your throat, it's like just like a little bit of jannah every time you eat it with a little bit of like hummus or like maybe some tahini or something like that. Well, we dip it in hummus, and that's what's special about your parent making it. It's Extra tasty. Allah, Allah. Okay, so tell us one more characteristic of your mom. What what else makes your mom special, Zakaria? What makes my mom special is just how well she thinks everything up. She meticulously plans every little bit of the day so that like we can both enjoy it and so that I can get as much experiences and learning and fun in as I can while also providing for my household. Subhanallah, man, that was so articulate and it was so, as you said that, it made me think about my wife and the role that my wife plays in upbringing my kids because she does the same thing every night. It's like, what's the plan for tomorrow? And then even in the morning, we talk about the plan again. What's the plan? And we talk about it, everything. And you know what? Like, it's not even just the day before. We'll create a calendar months before. Hey, what are we doing for, you know, Memorial Day weekend? We got to do something for the kids. Saturday's coming up. Subhanallah. May Allah bless your mom. What's your mom's name? My mom's name is Ra'ida. Ra'ida. Allahu Akbar. My, um, 
my daughter, my newest daughter, her name is Radia, which is the same letters, but different. Zachariah, that was awesome. You did such a good job. You guys, can we give Zachariah from Texas a big round of applause? That was, that was amazing. Good job, Zachariah. MashaAllah. Okay, Zachary, if you can do me a favor and mute for me, I will appreciate that. And then what I am going to do is I'm going to unpin Zacharia, and then we are going to go on with our program. Man, I'm happy I called on Zacharia. We called on good people today, man. We always call on good people, as a matter of fact, because you guys are all so smarty. Everyone here loves their moms. I love my mom, too. I love my mom more than you guys love your mom. No, I'm just kidding. We all love our moms the same. But the question is, the question is why do we love our mamas so much? And especially at this time of the year when people are feeling tired and groggy and not enough sleep and not enough water and feeling dehydrated, tempers can flare up. So we are going to be reading a book called Take See the Bright Side. The story we're going to be reading is called Trade Good for Best. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim I have to tell you guys something before we actually read it. Um, your brother Amin, he's a little bit tired right now. But I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this platform. So I'm always energized, especially when I see you guys. But on days when I'm tired, I think about, hey, what's a topic that I love? And I couldn't think of a topic that I love more than talking about moms. So this topic is one that I'm really, really jazzed about. And I hope you will be too. All right, let's read it. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Trade good for best. Amira is at Shireen's house. Look what my parents bought for me, says Shireen. <gasps> Walkie talkies. <laughs> Masha'Allah, so fancy, says Amira. They have a 100-yard range. Jaffer and I use them to talk all the time, says Shireen. My birthday is coming up. I'll ask my mom to get me a set just like this, says Amira. You should. Then we'd match. Later at home, Amira finds mom in the kitchen. Mom, can I? Hush, dear. This is an important call, says mom. But... Now, now, Amira, go work on your chores and let me finish this call, says Mom. Amira stomps off to her room. An important call? Mom's always too busy to listen to me. Chores, chores, chores. Amira, do this. Amira, do that. I don't think she cares about me at all. Woo! <gasps> Amir is being dramatic, but you guys, you guys, you got you each of you has been dramatic like Amira before. I know it. Okay? When maybe your mom's been on the phone or your dad's been on the phone and you try talking to them and they're and then you're like, ah! oh no. You that's that's happened. It's happened. Don't don't give me that. It has happened. All right, let's go on. Allah. Amira looks at her chore chart. Wednesday. Dust living room, dry dishes, clear tables. These are chores. It looks like on Monday she has to vacuum and clear the table. On Tuesday she's got to dust the office and set the table. Chores are very important. Many of you guys might think to yourself, oh, but I'm just a kid. Nah, uh-uh. You know, uh, as Muslims, you know, there are examples of people who are 13 years old who have led armies. 13 years old leading armies. Okay? So no one is too young to start cleaning up and helping out around the house. Dusting it is, says Amira. Amira dusts the living room. Still on the phone, she thinks to herself. 
As Amira dries the dishes after lunch, mom comes to heat her tea. tea. Mom, Shireen got these cool. Tell me later, Amira. I'm finishing an article with a tight deadline, says mom. Hush, tell me later. What I want doesn't matter at all, says Amira. Now, I will say it would have been nice if mom tried to hear her out, but look, again, sometimes things can be really busy. Okay, and I get it. I am going to move this. This is really distracting for me. Um, I think if I move this over here, there we go. That's better. <sighs> Later at dinner, Mom, Shireen got a pair of walkie talkies for her birthday. Can you buy me a matching set too? Sorry, dear. I won't be able to get you the walkie-talkies that this time. But why? I really want it, says Amira. Sometimes you just have to be patient, Amira, says Mom. Amira puts her, he her head on the table. I'd rather have the walkie-talkies than patience. I'd rather have the walkie-talkies than but she wants me to have patience. I, I just want the walkie- I don't even- You know what? I just- I just don't even want the walkie talk. I just don't wanna. I just don't wanna. I don't know. All right. Was that enough drama? Was that enough drama for you guys? Oh, it wasn't? Oh, that wasn't enough drama. Oh, you want more? You, you guys want more drama from me? Like, right now? No. You don't want it. Okay, you do? No! I need the walkie-talkie! Anything! For the walkie-talkie! All right, very good. All right, that's enough. That's enough. You guys, I... All right. Like, 10 years from now, I'll be like 40-something years old, and people are going to be like, what is this old man doing? Maybe you guys are doing it right now, but I don't think I look that old yet. But a day is going to come when people are like, why is this guy so dramatic? This is too much. Please. And hopefully by then you guys will have some of you guys working at Nora Kids and then you guys will do the programs for us. Inshallah. Hopefully sooner rather than later. I'll show you the best walkie-talkie, says Dad. Amira sits straight. You have a walkie-talkie set? asks Amira. She's so excited. Of course, says Dad. Psst. Mic check, mic check. Dad, that's dad, that's just like your hand, actually. Psst. Eyes on the table needs clearing. Amira, do you copy? Very funny, Dad, says Amira. She's not having she's not happy about this. Amira clears the table with her parents. Why won't they get me? What I want. This is serious, says Amira. Amira goes to bed upset and angry. Now she says something here, okay? She says something and it's dramatic. But sometimes when we're angry, when we're in the heat of the moment, sometimes people can say stuff like this, okay? And it's not okay, but this is what Amira says. Nobody in this house loves me. I wish I had Shireen's parents. The next day, Amira meets Shireen at the skate park. Did you talk to your mom? asked Shireen. Yeah, but she said no. I never get anything I want. Shireen performs a quick spin at the top of the ramp. Mashallah, nice spin. Alhamdulillah, says Shireen. Well, maybe your parents will get you something even better. I doubt it. What could be better than that cool walkie? Taki set. All right. Now we've got some questions for us. We've got some questions, or as some like to say, questions, and I'm going to go to the Zoom audience here. All right. Uh, I'm going to click on, uh, oh my goodness. All right. I'm going to, uh, so tough to pick. How can I pick? I'm going to pick on one person. I'm going to go to this person named. <sighs> I'm going to do Ria from Canada. Assalamu alaikum, Ria. 
Oh, can you unmute for me, my dear? I think on the Zoom, you have to press unmute. Maybe you might need to ask your mom for help. Do you know how to unmute? You don't? She's calling her mom. All right, while she calls her mom, the question that I'm going to be asking Rhea is a couple of them. Okay, there we go. Okay, okay there we go. All right. Assalamu alaikum, Ria. How are you doing, my dear? I'm good. Oh, my God. Are you doing good or are you doing super califragilistic, expialidociously awesome? I'm doing super califragilistic, expialidociously awesome. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Okay. And who's that little bundle of sunshine next to you? My brother. And what's his name? Dado. What is his name? Dado. Uh, oh my mashallah okay now Ria, let me ask you a question in life in life generally speaking who loves you the most my mom your mom okay and, and your dad okay now in general in general who in your life knows what is like the best for you allah Allah. Okay, but outside of Allah, like in terms of human beings in your life, like who probably knows what is best for you? Um, my mom. Your mom. Exactly. Okay, so what we have talked about at this point thus far is your mom probably loves you the most. And your mom probably knows what's best for you the most. Okay, so assuming our mom loves us the most and our mom knows what's best for us the most, if you're like Amira in this situation and your mom doesn't get something for you, even if you really want it, do you think that there's probably a reason behind it? What do you think, Ria? Mm. Yeah? There probably is a reason. Because of course our mom loves us. And of course our mom cares for us and she knows what's best for us. So even if we really, really want something, like the walkie-talkie set, and our mom says, I'm sorry, baby, I can't get it for you. Well, there's probably a reason for it. It's not like she's doing it randomly. There's a reason. Even if we don't understand, there must be a reason. Okay? By the way, Ria, do you think it's easy to be a mom all the time? Or do you think it can sometimes be tough? It can sometimes be tough. Why can it sometimes be tough? Because most of the time, my mom does all the things for us. She's so busy. She's got a th she got the phone calls and the emails, but she's also got to help out. She's got to, you know, get the kids ready and all that stuff, okay? So we always have to have a little bit of patience and give our mom a little bit of wiggle room, especially when we get angry. We, we can't, you know, we've got to be really careful about it. All right, Ria, should we go on to finish up the, the rest of the book? All right, yeah. can you spell your little brother's name for me? Because I didn't think I heard it very well. D D A. R W S E E S H Darwish Darwish Okay, very cool. Cool, cool, cool. All right, Rhea. Great job, my dear. You guys, let's all give Rhea a big round of applause. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. All right, how do I unpin? Let me see how I do that. Um it doesn't look like she is. Okay, anyways, it's good. Okay, so we should be in good shape then. Let me go back over here. Nope, she's still there. All right. Hold on, guys. Just give me give me un momento de aquí. And then we are going to continue the... All right. Well, it is what it is. All right, so we are going to continue the program. And let me read the rest of the story. After returning home, Amira comes down to do chores. Dust the family room. Fold the laundry. Amira stops when she sees a large package on the kitchen table. Huh? It has my name on it. Is this for me? For moi? Amira grabs the package. 
It's too big to be walkie-talkies. What could it be? Amira unwraps the present. Inside, she sees a beautiful new art set. There are paintbrushes. There is an, there's a paint. There are colored pencils. It looks like there is a calligraphy pen. It's like... Masha Allah, this is the best ever, says Amira. Mom and Dad come into the kitchen. Surprise, Amira! Mom, you both got this for me? Psst. Affirmative, says Dad into his fake walkie-talkie. It took forever to place the order. I was on the phone all day, says Mom. We want to show you that we appreciate the work that you do around the house, says Dad. Thank you both so much. It's our pleasure, dear, says Mom. I was mad before, but you got me a gift so much better than what I wanted. I'm sorry I doubted you, says Amira. We'll always do what's best for you, even if you don't realize it. You guys, I'm going to say that one more time, and I want you to listen. Because I know that there are times when you, as a little boy or girl, can sometimes not agree with everything your parents say. Maybe you might get frustrated or angry or sad. But remember this, we'll always do what is best for you, even if you don't realize it. Just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always does what's best for us. We may not get what we want, but then he gives us something better later, says dad. Sometimes later, sometime later, Amira brings her parents a present. I made my first painting with the new set. I call it the greatest gift Allah gave me. Amira shows mom and dad the painting. It's a painting of her mom and dad. Masha'Allah, I love it, says mom. Dad puts up his fake walkie-talkie. Psst, copy, roger that. The end. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, tells us that after obeying Allah, the next thing that we have to obey is our parents. Why? Because our parents love us. Our parents care about us. Our parents are the people who will wait for us to eat before they even eat. They will wait for us to get dressed before even they get dressed. Every moment of every day, their heart goes up and down based on you. And yeah, on a day like today, when people are tired and frustrated and dehydrated and sleepy, and other days as well, we can get into little rifts and tuffles and arguments with our parents. But I want you to remember... They are like the biggest blessing we have. And of course, as we talk about moms, and you guys all talked about your moms, I want to tell you guys about my mom. This, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this bundle of sunshine, that is my mom. That's me, that's my brother, and that's my mom in the middle. Her name was Shaheen. You know, you guys... When I think about my mom, it literally makes my heart happy. There were times when I would be going into really scary meetings with people when I was working. I was meeting this guy named Don Mulligan. He was like the CFO of our company, General Mills, big company. And I was a little small guy and I was so scared and I was sweating and I was like, didn't even know what I was going to say. And I was like, oh my goodness, I think my life is going to be over. I feel like I'm going to go talk to the fair own. And then my mom called me and she said, no matter what, your mom's going to love you. And just hearing that, it made my heart happy. I remember, for example, 
I had this exam called the GMAT. Oh my goodness, it was the most important exam of my life. It was four hours long. I was so stressed out about it. I spent months, months preparing for it. And it's not when I was a kid, I was like 24 years old. And I remember it was a four hour exam. It started at seven and it ended at 11 in the morning. And so my mom, while I was taking that exam for four hours, she in our house, she stood on her prayer mat with her hands in the air praying for me. That is my mom. Of course, my mom, she passed away. So even if I want to go hug my mom or kiss my mom or talk to her, I don't have that opportunity anymore. And I share that with you. And inshallah, I will someday. Inshallah, when, someday when I pass away and I hopefully get the opportunity to go to Jannah, inshallah, I'll meet her again. And by the way, even this Noor kids and everything we're doing, it's all because she made dua for us. My mom was the one who made dua for me. And it was through her dua that all of this was possible. And so I share that all to say as a reminder. There's no one, there's no blessing, there's nothing in the world that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that is as special as our mother. You know, a companion went to our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he asked him, he said, Oh Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is the person who I have the greatest obligation towards? Who's the person that I should like serve? And he said, your mother. He says, and then what about after that? And then he says, your mother. He says, what about after that? And he says, your mother. And then he says, what about after that? And he says, your father. He said, mother, 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 and then father. Now I say that as I'm a dad myself, and I love being a dad, and I think dads are important. But there's a difference between moms and dads. If heaven is under the foot of a mom, the most despicable, the dirtiest part. If heaven is under the foot of a mom, then imagine what is above it. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today's program, I told you, was made possible because of what? Because of the Muslim Treehouse. Today's program is also um, made possible because of another organization that is called um, bum, ba -da -dum, Masjid Al. Okay, uh, so I'm going to pick that up in just a moment. They are doing a deal today, okay, where uh, families can get... $12 off of um, off of these things. You're like, brother, I mean, what is the thing that we get $12 off of? Well, just just hold your horses for a moment. Hold your horses, please. All the horses, hold Hello. them. Okay, I want you to watch this video and then you'll understand. Hello. Hey, it might be a good idea to show your parents. Your parents might like this. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar
All right, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is an Avon frame from Masha. That was kind of cool because when you think about it, like in your house, every time it's prayer time, the Mashadal um, Adhan clock will go off. And right now you can get 12 bucks off, which is kind of cool because then it's cheaper um, and it's Ramadan. It's a great time to kind of commit to doing that. So if uh, if you don't have it, take advantage of it. Tell your parents to take advantage of it. Also, the link is in the email that we send before every program. Um, I also want to share you guys this. This is our YouTube subscribers because, come on, what in the world, guys? This should be higher. Higher, make it higher. Go up, subscribe. Come on, people on YouTube, hit the subscribe button now. Let's go. Bismillah. It's not moving. You can't all be subscribed. I know you're not. YouTube tells me that 60% of you did not subscribe. Just hit the subscribe button, guys. All right. The Man, you guys are you guys are you guys are impossible. I can't believe you. It went down. All right, but hey, here's the thing. I'm not going to be the one who's laughing. You're going to be the one who's going to be crap. But why? Because we're going to be giving away trip to the Bahama or to the Dominican Republic. But only if we get to 85. If we don't get to 85,000, it's not going to happen. You guys are going to be the ones who miss out. Not me. Not me. Not me. You. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, let's go higher. All right, so we challenged you uh, to show us your masjid. Many of you guys participated, okay? Uh, many of you guys uh, did not participate. That's okay. But many of you guys did. We're going to watch some of them, and I'm going to react to them. All right? Let's do it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. That's so cool. So they didn't show us their mushrooms, but they showed us their balcony. And you know what's crazy? Um, it reminds me when, you know, when my mom was sick um, during um, Shaban, which comes before Ramadan. I remember I would go out to the deck just like this, and we would look for the moon. Because when we saw the moon, we knew that the month of Ramadan was here. And of course, Ramadan is the most blessed month. And so, um, and sometimes we would pray outside underneath the sky, which is something that's special. Very cool. Thank you. All right, let's see this one. Um, I go to Swanee Masjid, also known as Jai Sea Masjid, where we have on Fridays and Saturdays, most, most of Okay, I don't know if she's going to show us her masjid, though. Let's see if she shows us her masjid. Okay, this one's having a difficult time loading, so I'm going to go to the next one. You know, the one thing is that sometimes tricky is flip, sometimes... <coughs> Assalamualaikum, my kids. My name is Akidia, uh, and I'm in California, and this is my masjid. It's called the South Sacramento... Islamic Center. I'm not there yet, so I'm just going to show you the picture. And and I'm going to show you the inside of it. It looks like a nice masjid. It, and it's in Sacramento. Sacramento is like a very warm area. Oh, that's See? inside. This is what it looks like on the inside. Nice. There's lights, and you see, and you can see this, that you see, it says follow, oh, www. That's very, so let's just, sh I want to show you something here, okay? So maps.google.com. So this is Minnesota, of course, this is where I live. I'm just zooming out. So this is Minnesota. So our buddy who just showed us his mush, that was in Sacramento, that's over here. And then um, the other sister... She was in Dubai. That's the United Arab Emirates. That's over here. Okay. All right. Let's watch another one. Nice. Thank you, Ali. All right. This is Gozlan from Kenya. Assalamu alaikum, Noor kids. My, my name is Gozlan. I want to show you my art for Ramadan. 
your art for Ramadan, my dear. This is Ramadan, the mushroom. I do a mosque. This. Okay, so that's not, you know, it's a nice artwork goes on. I love the artwork, but I want to see your actual masjid, okay? All right, so we'll do another one. This is my mosque in Chechnya. All right, so while that loads... Okay, so while that's loading, let's actually go on Google Maps and look at where Chechnya is. Okay, so that's over here. Wow. I'll be honest, I don't think I've met anyone from Chechnya before. That's so cool. So Chechnya is over here. It's above Georgia, close to Azerbaijan. Um, and above it is what? Oh, it borders Russia. Wow. Okay. Hey, good morning, kids. My name is Salim. And this is Kawa. And this is my mosque. Dude, are you serious? What? That's insane. Man, I wish the loading wasn't so bad. Man. You know... There we go. You guys, the loading is a little bit... All right, the loading's a little bit tough. You guys, I think I'm going to I'm going to call this one. Uh, I think that the loading is just a little bit tough. We it would have been better if we downloaded it and then showed it. Um I probably should have done that. I'm sorry guys. Normally we do do that, but your brother Amin was feeling a little bit tired. Forgive me. Man, um it's just tough because when it's loading and then it goes go, 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 it's just not fun to watch. Okay, so here's here's my commitment to you. Here's my commitment to you. Tomorrow we are going to inshallah um play some games um we also have a muslim maker segment and then on monday monday might be the last day of our ramadan no no it might be no i know i know i know it's sad it's so sad now but hey 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 join the muslim treehouse that way you don't have to be sad don't Wipe your tears, little boy or girl. Just join the Muslim Treehouse. You'll be all good, okay? And by the way, hit the subscribe button so that way we can, inshallah, give away this trip to the Dominican Republic. You guys, it's not going to be easy, actually, because real talk, we have to get to 85,000. So if we don't get to 85,000, we're in trouble. I hope we do get there. I think we can. Inshallah, let's see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I will see you.